Hello, how are you getting on? It's your favourite big lump of an Irish man here again today. And we're going to be looking at the national dish from each European country, learning a little bit about what the foremost dish of each country is. Uh, I have a feeling a few of these are probably going to be wrong because these lists are usually fairly inaccurate. But we'll have a look. We'll start with countries I'm more familiar with because I'll kind of know whether they're on the money or not. So first of all, my beautiful country of Ireland here. And it's saying our national dish is Irish stew, which I couldn't really... You, you might call it stew in America, but we say stew. Um, I don't really have any argument with this. I suppose it is. If you were to ask me what our national dish is, I would say it's bacon and cabbage. But Irish stew is probably up there as well, so it'll be, it'll be kind of between the two of those. So Irish stew, if you don't know what it is, basically it's some vegetables, usually root vegetables, in a pot with some meat and some potatoes and a bit of gravy or beef stock or something like that. Sometimes we make it fancy with Guinness. Usually if you get an Irish stew on a menu, it's going to have Guinness in it because that makes it extra Irish. Next up, we have the United Kingdom with chicken tikka masala. Now, this kind of confuses me a bit. I know that, like, UK-ified Indian cuisine is a huge thing. But is that really the national dish? When I think of the UK, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, like, Greg sausage rolls. I'm thinking like like tea party food little dainty little sandwiches with the crusts gone off and little cups of tea and little cakes that's what i think of when i think of the uk or like fish and chips i'd probably think fish and chips tea party food or sausage rolls but apparently chicken tikka masala i also don't understand why the uk is just all one thing because uh i mean northern ireland will be quite different to scotland will be quite different to england will be quite different to wales like i know wales i don't know what wales has wales is a mysterious little country i've been there but it's like kind of a cheeky little mystery All I know really about Wales is they love putting W's and Y's into their words. Like, if you look up any place name from Wales, it's like A W Y W Y W Y W Y for like eight characters and then N. And it's like, oh yeah, that's that's my name or I live there. But yeah, chicken tikka masala from the United Kingdom, bit of a strange one. Iceland, Hakari. Is that Hakari or Hakarl? Uh, I'm going to look it up. I don't have any idea what this is. Um, It is called Hakarl and it fucking, it looks like bats. But it's fermented, I think it's fermented shark. Okay, so Hakarl, um, uh, an abbreviation of Quister Hakarl, Icelandic pronunciation. Sorry if I butchered that, guys. I don't know any Icelandic. Referred to as fermented shark is the national dish of Iceland, consisting of Greenland shark or other sleeper shark. So let's have a look at these sharks. Oh, he's pretty cool looking. Let's see the Greenland shark. They look exactly the same. Are they the same shark? I thought they were different. Okay. That has been cured with a particular fermentation process and hung to dry for four to five months. So if you go to Iceland, you're going to have to try some hanging fermented shark. Bit of a weird one, not going to lie. That's that's quite foreign. The funny thing about when you go to other countries is because of the internet and everything, countries are like mostly the same. So like you go to another country and it's like, oh, I can buy a sandwich, I can buy McDonald's. But then every now and again, you run into something that's super foreign to you. So it's like, oh yeah, no, we have a sandwich that has like, you know, kangaroos in it. And you're like, oh, and you just sell that in the shop. But that's amazing. I'm assuming because this is cured, I can probably, like, purchase this. Like, they can probably ship it to me because it's, like, transportable. Yeah, it seems like you can buy it. Here it is. Some putrefied shark meat. Um, I would work on the market of this. Putrefied. Not usually a word people want to hear in something they're going to eat. But there it is. Maybe I'll buy some. Um, I'm not going to lie. It, do- it doesn't massively appeal to me. But maybe I'll try it. Okay, so next we have a stamp pot from the Netherlands. Uh, so I think I actually have had a version of this. So this is like mash. It's like mashed potatoes, but it's mashed together with uh, vegetables like kale or spinach or turnip. I think I've had a version of this, but I've never had like a traditional stamp pot. And uh, they usually serve it, I believe, with a big curly sausage, which you absolutely can't beat. Um, now, the version of this I've had has been delicious. I absolutely love potatoes and all of their work. And this was no exception. So I'm going to actually rate this one. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. So next up we have Germany. Germany obviously is famous for sausages. um, And apparently the national dish is sausages and sauerkraut. Uh, now, I've had German sausages. They're uh, they're actually quite fucking delicious, to be honest with you. Sauerkraut I've also had, and it's okay. 
Um, it didn't offend me, but I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to be waking up in the middle of the night with a hankering for sauerkraut. Um, it didn't really hit my buds that way. Um, but I, I thought it was okay. I thought I'd like it less than I did. So uh, I'm going to give this, for the sausage element, I'm going to give this 8 out of 10. And for the sauerkraut element, I'm going to give it like a 5.1. Um, it's okay. So Denmark's dish is sticked, staked, staked flea, flask, staked flea, flask. I don't know how you say that conjoined A-E letter. I actually think I was pretty close. I think it's, yeah, I, I just got to do more of a case down. So it's like staked flask. I think. I think that's how you say it. We're close enough. It's a dish, and it's fried. Obviously, it's a dish. We're looking up national dishes. Uh, it's fried pork belly, and generally served with potatoes and parsley sauce. The dish is sometimes translated to pork strips, or crisp fried pork slices. This looks okay. I've had pork belly, and pork belly is very nice. Um, potatoes, I'm absolutely not complaining. Parsley sauce, I can't see it going wrong. I've never had this, but I would imagine it's pretty fucking good. So, if I'm ever in Denmark, I'm definitely going to try out some staked flask. So, Switzerland is fondue. I did not know that that's where fondue came from. Now, I'm not going to lie. I've never had fondue. Um, I don't like the idea of fondue, to be honest with you. I don't like dipping where other people are dipping there's there's just something about that for me I, i'm sure there's nothing unhygienic about it but it just I, fondue has never appealed to me so i've never had it now i understand that the concept of fondue is you got like a long stick with some food on it and you dip it into the cheese but i don't actually know what food do you dip into the is it bread i i bet it's probably just bits of baguette is it Fondue is a Swiss melted cheese and wine dish. Oh, there's wine in it. I didn't know that either. Served in a communal pot. That's the part I'm not a big fan of. Over a portable stove. Heated with a candle or spirit lamp. And eaten by dipping bread into the cheese. That's how you do it. On a long stemmed fork. Let's have a look at a fondue fork. i never seen one. Here they are in all their glory. Fondue forks. They look pretty cool. Maybe I'll start eating exclusively with fondue forks. And when people come over to my house and ask for a fork, I'll give them this. And be like, listen, that's just the vibe here. France is steak. I think that's steak fritas. Um, I've never seen the word fritters written down, if I'm honest. I've heard it said. Uh, if not, it's steak frites, but I think it's steak fritters. I've never read that word before, so here we are, learning as we go. Um, what exactly is this? It's probably becoming apparent at this point that I'm not very cultured. So, uh, steak fritters, meaning uh, steak and fries. Oh, is that all it is? It's just steak and... Th this is steak and chips. This is what the French do. And listen, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. This is what the French do. They make something sound fancy, and then you realise it's just steak and chips. I thought this was going to be like a cow who, like, wrote books and was killed and f fermented in, you know, a spicy barrel. <laughs> I thought it was going to be something really fancy. Uh, it's steak and chips. Is this the French? Is this the quintessential French dish? I don't know. I think about like escargot or 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 like croissants or what, what are those little sandwich guys called? You know those little col colorful little biscuit dudes with the stuff in the middle? Is it macaroons? I think it's macaroons. Yeah, these motherfuckers. I've always wanted to try these little guys, um, but I've never have. It's just I've never got to the place in my life where I'm like, oh, I'm going to pick up a few macaroons. But I always look at them and I'm like, oh, I, I want to try a macaroon. I think I might buy some macaroons today and try them on TikTok. Yeah, I'm going to do that. So Austria, their national dish is Tafelspitz. I'd work on the name, maybe, um, but I'm sure it means something absolutely class. Okay, so Tafelspitz, uh, it, it appears to mean top of the table in German, so I knew I knew in German it would mean something cool. It just doesn't sound great when we say it. Uh, it's boiled veal or beef in broth, served, I love how they've shown me, I love how they've showed me what animal I kill to get that. Um, it's this, it's this one, guys. Not this one, it's this one, I'm afraid. Served with a mix of minced apples and horseradish, it is a classic dish of the Viennese cuisine and popular in all of Austria and neighboring German state of Bavaria. Um, this, I would imagine, is okay. The apple, 
I'm not sure about it. I'm sure it works. I'm sure you've got it there for a reason. Uh, but, f you know, I'm skeptical of it. I'm not going to lie. Um, so, yeah, I must try this. National dish of Austria. This isn't what I would have thought. But, yeah, here we are. This is the Austrian dish. Uh, some apple um, uh, cow. Okay, so next up here we've got Croatia. And they've got a Zagorski Struckli. Oh, I absolutely love that name. I know I'm saying it completely wrong. But I, it sounds really strong. I absolutely love it. I have no idea what it is. Okay, so um, Zagorski Struckli, pronounced in a way that makes it even more difficult for me to pronounce, is a popular traditional Croatian dish served in households across the Hrvatsko Zagorji region and the Zagreb regions. Sorry. <laughs> in the north of the country. Composed of dough and various types of fillings, which can be either boiled or baked. It's closely related to Strukiji, a traditional Slovene dish. Um, they're keeping their cards fairly close to their chest. They're not really telling me what it is. Dough with filling. Um, maybe we'll get some more idea if we go down. So a mixture of cottage cheese with eggs or sour cream and salt is spread thinly over the pastry. I think they fill it with onion and parsley. I don't know. They're not giving much away, to be honest. Um, yeah, it's, it's a dough with filling. Um, sounds delicious to me. It looks pretty good too. Um, yeah, I don't really know what this is any more than when I started looking at it. Okay, so next up we have Malta with Stuffat Tal Fennec. And uh, this is basically rabbit stew. So rabbit stew, also referred to as hair stew when a hair is used. So it seems to be mainly root vegetables and rabbit meat. Um, I'm not going to lie, I would take some convincing on this one. It doesn't look absolutely amazing to me. I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's nice, uh, but it's not jumping right out to me as I need to try that one. Okay, so let's make our way over to a couple that I do recognize. Spaghetti Bolognese. Absolutely love spaghetti Bolognese. It's an absolute staple in Irish houses as well. We absolutely love this one. I'm sure we don't make it as good as the Italians. In fact, I know I'm an eighth Italian myself. I know I look very exotic. Um, yeah, a 10 out of 10 on the spaghetti Bolognese. Absolutely love it. Now, one thing I will say is that I have a bit of a weird pet peeve where when people call spaghetti bolognese spag ball it pisses me off i don't know why i know it makes sense it's a long word but i do when people say oh i might make spag ball i'm like well i'm not fucking having any you fucking bollocks don't know why don't know why it maddens me that much another one i've had here is spanish paella absolutely fucking love a bit of spanish paella you kind of beat it well you can beat it but it's really nice um, so yeah, it's great to see a couple of familiar faces here finally. Um, absolutely love these ones. I wonder what it is about about certain dishes like paella or bolognese that they make their way up to us, but we don't end up with uh, taffel spits or or zagruski skrukl, however you pronounce that one. I wonder though, is it like that in a lot of these countries where like say you know in malta they're absolutely wild for a bit of croatian filled pastry but they've never fucking heard of a chicken tikka masala they 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 cannot understand the concept of an irish stew or a paella i don't know i'm sure it is i'm sure lots of these countries share their own cuisine and are like spaghetti bolognese that's fucking weird as shit who's eating that I don't know. Okay, so next we have Slovenia with Belo Kranjska Provitica. I am sorry about how I pronounce that. So this is like uh, like a rolled pastry, and I think there's like cream cheese and heavy cream and stuff in between it. I'm not sure is this a different dish, because this also comes up a lot, but this looks significantly different to the other one. So it's one of these two. Um, everything I've read says it's like a rolled pastry, uh, pastry cake kind of a thing. It looks very nice to be honest with this. I mean, this looks absolutely amazing. Um, so I would definitely try this. This is, I believe, I think this is a dessert. So this might be the first dessert we're seeing as a national dish. Okay, so this video is getting kind of long. So we're going to finish up here with uh, the Portuguese bacalao. Um, so basically, what this is, is it seems like it's cod. Um, and it, there's no like clear way that you're meant to prepare it it seems like it's made a lot of different ways but it's cod which is traditionally served with potatoes sweet potatoes yams and bread so there's a good look at it there 
Um, I'd say it's nice. I'm a fan of cod. I'm a, I'm a fish guy. So I think it could be good. Um, is it jumping out of me as one of the main dishes I'd want to be trying? No, but I'd give it a go and I bet I'd love it. Anyway, we'll leave it there for now. Let me know if you want to see a part two. Make sure you like the video if you liked the video. And if you didn't like the video, show me how much you disliked it by also liking the video. Also, share it with all your friends and subscribe to me because I am delicious.